Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the APAC Dialogue. Uh, briefly, APAC News Network. We are a media organization headquartered out of uh, Noida and uh, with uh, Pan India presence, uh, and we focus on uh, technology adoption across different verticals like government, like healthcare, like education, BFSI, manufacturing, as well as startups. Uh, so primarily, uh, we have uh, with us uh, today for the interaction, Mr. Ved Antani from Twilio. And uh, we welcome you uh, to the show, Ved. And uh, the way we would like to uh, structure the discussion today Initially, we would like to talk about the Twilio solutions and their uh, differentiators and what's the traction you witness certain case studies. And uh, after that, uh, maybe a little bit on the customer engagement solutions and how our customer experience can be enhanced. Uh, so uh, the, probably the best way would be if you can start with giving us an update on the Twilio portfolio in terms of both solutions as well as services. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ratnish, for having me today as your guest. Really delighted to speak to all your viewers and help you understand as Twilio what we are doing in this uh, changing digital era, right? Um, I'll spend some time introducing your viewers um, what Twilio globally does what is the specific value that we are bringing to our customers, um, how, we are, how we are enabling the digital transformation that you just spoke about, right? Um, so broadly, um, Twilio has been known to be world's largest CPaaS, communications platform as a service. Um, and if you look at the product portfolio, like you said, you know, um, Twilio's goal is to make sure that we use our platform to enable very powerful consumer engagement constructs. So we build building blocks. Twilio is known to democratize communication channels, for example, voice, SMS, email, video, all the, all the communication channels that we have now, we are very familiar with, uh, and they're actually part of our life. Twilio is world's largest CPaaS. But during this, uh, during this uh, uh, the era of transformation, we also realized that most of the companies, most of the businesses that we work with, they have, they have a very strong need to engage with their customers, with the data, with the right mean, meaningful approach. Um, we are um, building several very, very large scale consumer engage, engagement products um, that I would love to actually take you through. Uh, like you said, what are the portfolio, right? So apart from, all the messaging channels, for example, messaging, video, email, we are also a platform for um, very large scale contact center, for example, Twilio Flex. We are one of the largest consumer data platform, Twilio segment. We are building one of the most ambitious consumer engagement platform. We are calling it Twilio Engage. The idea is to make sure that you as a customer are in complete control of using methods of reaching to your consumers in a more meaningful data-driven, ML-driven kind of a way. And that is our goal. Now, um, so you actually spoke about this um, in the beginning, and I'm actually glad that you actually started off with. Um, there is also a lot of ambition around Asia as a region, India as a market, right? Um, India as a market is one of the most promising market out there and Twilio recognizes the fact, right? Uh, the fact that we are talking here, um, I am in Bangalore, you are in Noida, uh, is also the fact that we are moving our focus on making sure that the region and the market is governed by uh, the technology that we are building globally as well, right? And I can go into some parts of it as we go along in the discussion but wanted to keep this context with you as a start. Um, and um, uh, we recently uh, um, uh, sort of pr promoted a customer engagement uh, review report. 
And there are some very, very interesting findings on that that will be very important for this discussion. So when we come to that, I'd like to take some time and help your viewer try to understand how the entire consumer engagement market is shifting. What are the marketers thinking about? What do they need and what are the challenges? But I hope that's a good enough context for you to start. Yes, uh, so uh, basically uh, to put that context in uh, place, uh, what is emerging when you are talking about customer experience is there are multiple delivery channels now. So basically yes. it's an omni delivery kind of channel. <laughs> it can be social media, it can be video, it that's can right, be right. Uh, mails and uh, whatnot, uh, voice. Uh, so uh, keeping that in context when there is an yeah. omni delivery yeah. channel, and when you are talking about the trends, so how are these solutions? I would say, they, how are they structured uh, so that whatever delivery channel is being used, they are leveraged optimally uh, and uh, enhance the customer experience so that that would be ultimately made. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a fantastic question, and this is something that one of my favorite topic. Yeah. So um, I'll actually lean on to the findings that we had in the uh, customer engagement report that just came out. And I would really love your uh, viewers to actually take a look at that. Some of the findings are even quite revealing for me, and I'm in this business for a while now. <clears throat> so the most important finding that we had in the report, and we actually spoke to about 3,450 uh, customer leaders for 4,500 customers, and, and just to find what businesses need to engage their customers. The first and foremost finding is, like you said, multi-channel digital interaction. Every persona has a different need with email, with, with SMS, with multiple other channels. If you are a contact center, you would need capabilities that can actually engage my customers via multiple channels. So what is the most important finding from the report is people are looking for direct digital multi-channel interactions with their consumers. Second most important area where businesses are, are looking at, you know, putting a lot of focus is personalization. I can't tell you how important that voice is. And I actually speak to a lot of big customers in the region. And every single time I hear big customers talk about how do I personalize my communication with my customers? How can you make me reduce the number of touch points, but make it more meaningful? And we'll talk about this a little, little bit later. Um, and the third is, which is where the entire shift is also happening, is now that a lot of companies like browsers, you know, ad tech companies, the governments are pushing towards making your third party cookies restricted. What are the options left for you, right? If I'm a marketer, the moment my third party cookies are restricted, everything that is coming from customer as an insight is stopped. I can't build my campaigns on top of that. So this is one of the concerns that everyone that we talked to came up with. So if I give you a summary of what I believe, what are these trends? Um, you'll be surprised that some of these things are, are quite obvious, but some of things are not. So what is the first insight? Digital multi-channel communications, like you asked, and you rightly pointed out. Personalization. 70% of the companies think they are giving good personalized experience, but really, that's not the case, right? Cookies don't work, yeah? And this is happening as we speak. But one more thing I want to leave with your viewers is that when we are talking about the scale of the transformation, it will be increasingly important for companies to build trust. Governance of your information and data, security, how do you make sure that your data is governed, right? Every company has to start thinking about this more carefully. And finally, like you said, how do you engage smartly? I don't want to send like 100 emails in a month. I want to send 10 emails, but very effective. Yeah. So these are the few themes coming, coming out very, very strongly 
um, in our digital report, uh, which I would encourage your viewers to take a look at. They are, they are very, very uh, important insights over there. Great. Uh, so uh, indeed, some of these insights are uh, uh, revealing, as you are mentioning. So coming specifically, as you earlier mentioned, to the Indian market. What I would like to understand is, uh, uh, one, which are some of the verticals uh, where uh, Twilio in the Indian market has seen maximum traction and more importantly, in these verticals, uh, what are the sort of, say, customer experience we are talking is again very generic, but specifically, yeah. what are the sort of use cases uh, in these yeah. verticals where you witness more traction? Yeah, and I think this is also something that um, uh, in the in the in the last two years, the the breadth of use cases have dramatically increased. If you talk about consumer engagement, the first thing that comes to your mind is marketing use cases, right? Because we are known to known to that use case uh, quite a lot in India and outside as well. But as we started looking at the transformational possibilities more deeply. Um, several other use cases started imaging. For example, sales. Now the sales, the entire ecosystem of sales is getting transformed. Gone are the days when I pick up a call and try to sell something to you. I need to be extremely intelligent about how to deploy my sales resources towards the right channels. Sales is one of the biggest use case, especially in, in countries like India. Uh, we have seen tremendous use cases on customer support. If, if you look at Twilio Flex, the entire premise of Twilio Flex is that your contact center experience is extremely intelligent. So you don't waste time on a hold. You get to the right contact center employee who can solve your queries much faster. We are using ML, we are using voice um, optimizations, uh, NLP to make sure that your experience on Twilio Flex is extremely seamless. So marketer is the persona and the use case that is the most prominent one. But then there are multiple, very, very high impact use cases emerging in global ecosystem as well as in India. For example, healthcare. We have seen massive transformation in healthcare in the US as well as in you know, some parts of APK. Right? And I can go on and on. But I think the point that I'm trying to make is that while we focused and addressed the marketer's needs, by looking at consumer engagement, we also realize that there is a very important, but one use case, and then there are multiple use cases that have started emerging. Um, I can't tell you how many times I get on a call with an enterprise customers on FinTech, for example, a bank in Japan, or, 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 or a healthcare company in Singapore. And though the nuances of their use cases are different, Fundamentally, they are talking about the five themes that I spoke to you about. How to engage, how to digitalize, how to make sure their data is secure, right? So we have started observing a massive shift in the way of thinking about going digital. And Twilio, some of the solutions that I already spoke to you about, is addressing all of them um, by building very, very strong building blocks across data and communication channels. Got it. Uh, so you mentioned uh, some of the use cases where the sales engines and obviously the marketeers. Uh, vertical wise, you mentioned fintechs and healthcare where certain adoption. Uh, if yes. we specifically uh, last couple of years uh, stick to the Indian market, and especially yeah. in the last couple of years, uh, when some of the dynamics have changed Obviously, uh, even the customer interface has become more digital uh, because of the pandemic and all the things. So in light of this scenario, uh, yeah. if I may ask uh, more specifically, uh, yes. how has the Indian market experience been in the last couple of years and which yes. have been some of these marquee uh, wins, if I may mention? Yes, absolutely. Um, India is a home of 100 unicorns. We, 
we are a very important market. We also produce a lot of unique uh, use cases. And I can actually talk about a few that were were very interesting for us to partner with. For example, um, we, we worked with a very interesting uh, company called Dream11. Dream11, if you are familiar, they are they are esports uh, company, and they have massive user base. And their challenge was to how do I how do I build a high volume transactional email systems to reach to my consumers for everything that happens on the platform. For example, their payment got accepted, OTPs, their scores, etc. They wanted to actually send about 500 emails a month. To their user base. When we talk about India, then we always talk about scale. This is a one of a kind use case. Um, and Dream Eleven partnered with uh, Twilio SendGrid, um, which is incidentally the team that I I run. Um, and their use cases were very unique in that they wanted high throughput transaction emails. They wanted to reach to their consumers using email as a primary channel very unique use case it is part marketing part transactional part promotional but as a channel we were able to support that resiliency and that scale very effectively so dream 11 was a was a fantastic use case for twilio's platform in terms of security reliability and scale um we uh, also partnered with an edtech company in india called edureka uh, one of the most well-known um, company out there, very innovative, very forward-thinking company. They wanted voice solutions to to support their global support connectivity 24/7, and they partnered with us very early in their in their uh, uh, sort of uh, inception to make sure that um, all their voice requirements are built on Twilio's programmable voice APIs. Um, if you are uh, a you know, careful observer of uh, EdTech in India, you know how in last two years, the entire EdTech transformation happened, yeah? And I was very fortunate to be part of the, the team that was helping Edureka getting on board of Tuli Voice. And I have seen real life impact on students, on teachers by, when they moved to Twilio and, 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 and the kind of use cases that have emerged from that transformation was, was quite, quite interesting. And finally, uh, one, of my, um, one of my favorite uh, use case uh, was with a company called Qualify.ai. This is a very unique company where they intelligently build, um, um, they, 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 they actually build smart solutions to, um, handle your sales calls, their, your recruiting calls, every kind of outbound reach. They use AI and ML to make sure that you are only calling the optimized channels, uh, optimized paths. Um, we had a very deep integration into Qualify. Yeah? Uh, we helped them build their stack. We helped them build uh, quite a bit of messaging capabilities, videos and voices capabilities. But again, when we started working with Qualify, there was a phase of discovery because we found so many deep India specific use cases that we took back and incorporated into our solutions as well. Now, I can only give you a few examples, but you, you, you actually get the point that the number of India specific use cases outside of the traditional marketing space that we are very familiar with are also very, very wide ranging. And the journey has just, just started. And I'm extremely excited about how we are working with India companies uh, on, on such a large um, range of use cases. And Twilio is able to enable meaningful consumer engagement with such a wide variety of problem spaces. OK. So before I come to the GTM part, uh, I would like to ask a question you are mentioning, and obviously, uh, AI and ML uh, is being uh, used extensively, uh, leveraged extensively. Now my question is, uh, many of these, though the examples you mentioned were more the new age kind of companies, so yeah. they don't have 
carry too much technology legacy. Uh, but if you look at uh, VFSI sort of companies who have or uh, retail or FMCG kind of companies who have a big customer interface, there's a lot of legacy technology. So there will That's be right. enterprise CRM solutions maybe uh, and uh, other enterprise solutions, even the ERP. So now this integration and especially when you are leveraging so much of AI ML, uh, how is that integration? Because it's not possible or not viable for everyone to completely uh, remove all the legacy applications. So how is that integration with the applications, current application, the existing applications being done? Yeah, this is this is a, a, a challenge not only in India but mostly in in um, in the region, Asia region, where there is a there is a very wide mix of like you said legacy platforms. Um, there are certain regulatory challenges as well that allows you only to integrate in a such a fashion right now we have seen some of these challenges in 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 less extent in europe and us also but asia is a very unique region let's say that you are a public bank right and you are going through the digital transformation and one of the transformation that you want to embark on is to make sure that you are using a platform like Twilio to reach out to your consumers. But like you said, a large part of the consumer data that you already have is, is kept on your old legacy platform. Now, the great thing about Twilio is that we are a developer-friendly company. Our biggest strength is APIs in the building blocks. Right? As long as you are able to find a way to marry your legacy data or legacy platform by using Twilio APIs, you get to this integration very fast. And I'll give an example of what that actually means. If you go to Twilio.com website, and if you look at the documentation in terms of send, sending an email, let's say, via SendGrid APIs, it's a 15 line of code that you have to write to make sure that any legacy system or any other system can integrate with Twilio, right? And that is the most important uh, area where Twilio has invested over the last 11 years, right? Um, we have actually worked with many, many companies, enterprise companies, BFSI companies, telcos, where the integration with their legacy system was done in a similar path. Now, in some cases, it was quite complex because you know they, they were like layers of complexities around that. But essentially, as much as as long as you are able to connect to a platform like Twilio using APIs, your integration path is is quite simple, right? Um, and then at the same time, we are also building several building blocks to make sure that your legacy data is populated in a in a more modern way where you can actually accelerate your transformation much faster for example twilio cdp which is segment which is a which is which is a world's largest consumer data platform allows you to connect more than 400 data sources including like direct data dumps csv uploads connection connection with salesforce etc and that data then becomes very very available in mod for you to engage on yeah, please go ahead. When you are talking about these multiple data sources, uh, so how do you apply the standardization on that? Uh, because whenever you are uh, basically uh, extracting the data from multiple data sources, uh, the authentication, since you uh, focused on the security and the compliance aspect uh, earlier, uh, these sources are unless there is some standardization not applied, even your AIML will not work effectively to give you okay. proper insights. Okay. Uh, so the security and the compliance issue can get compromised since we are right. talking about multiple data sources. So how do you that is correct. manage that? So when I say multiple data sources, um, 
you as a you as a customer you own the schema of how you want to represent the data so this is where the beauty of the platform comes in so a banking company might have a different customer schema than an e-commerce company but as a consumer of segment for example i will own how i define the schema so i control the data in which will be represented right now that is the part which actually solves largely how data is consumed from diverse sources and once you have the data in the right schema you can apply machine learning on top of it like you said because now you have a standardized data schema correct so this is how majority of the businesses are using segment right now and uh, the product that i actually spoke to you in the beginning which is called twilio engage actually takes this platform way ahead in its intelligent capabilities by allowing to craft your campaigns your journeys uh, different personas within the data that you have so the the platform will become even more intuitive for any kind of business to actually start pumping data into it and get insights out of it but the key is that as a customer you are the expert of your business and you own the schema now coming to security security and the resilience of our platform is where we spend majority of our time um, all the data that you are putting into the uh, cdp is compliant on hipaa is like com compliant on gdpr it is compliant on the the kind of data centers that you will own of your own so for example there are ways in which i can say that hey you know what i will own my own data center that is also possible so you have the choice and the power to define how your data should look like and how the data will be stored but out of the box you get the best in class security and compliance from Twilio. i hope that gives you an outline in terms of how we are thinking about it okay uh, now uh, coming specifically to the go-to-market strategy for the indian market uh, one uh, if you can uh, little, uh, give a little more detail on the yes. gtm initiatives and uh, also, as part of that, I would like to understand. In many cases, you mentioned uh, the sales engines or the marketeers as the um, use cases. So, uh, are uh, the who in the enterprises uh, are you talking to? Is it the marketeers or is it the technology person or uh, whom are the conversations normally happen? Interesting. So I'll, I'll answer that question first. Um, the persona that we we are very, very closely connected to is usually the decision maker persona, right? So you be, if you are if you're talking about marketer marketing as our use case, our persona is usually the CMO and the decision makers who drive the decision in terms of how the marketing tool sets would look, look like. Um, if we are going to uh, enterprise companies, for example, we we talk to the enablers like CIO and CSOs, whose role is to define the infrastructure, security, and data policies across the companies. Right? And these are these are very very wide uh, uh, topics. So our approach is to make sure that we address them by by actually trying to understand what exactly these companies would need from us. For sales, for example, our approach is to, to um, sort of engage with the sales leaders across different genres. For example, uh, sales in B2C versus B2B is very different. Um, and we engage with the right people depending on the domain that we are working in. For example, if you are, if you are in B2C, you will see us engaging with, with, the, with the key decision makers on the sales side. If you are talking to B2B, that becomes quite complex because then the the aspect of ISVs, the resellers, the partnerships also come in, and that can actually give you different insights into what they need. So, just to summarize, our personas are decision makers who actually can help us understand what, in terms of the product capabilities, they need from us. Now, coming back to your uh, first question, which was more about go-to-market motion in India specifically. 
So I'll, I'll just give you the lay of the land. I'll actually help you understand how at this point of time we are set up. So in Asia region, we have <clears throat> multiple offices. We have uh, multiple offices in Singapore, Sydney, Melbourne, Hong Kong, Tokyo, and Bangalore is the largest R&D center in the region. Right? Um, we started this region two years back. Uh, we actually started Bangalore two and a half years back, somewhere around February 2020. Um, and in two years, Twilio India has become the largest site outside of the United States. Uh, in Bangalore, we have multiple functions, a very large R&D function which focus on product development. We have large um, go-to-market function that's, that, that focus on multiple aspects of the function and actually partner and work very closely with the rest of the uh, um, um, offices within the region as well. Now, we recognize the importance of Asia and India very deeply. And the region and, and the reason why we have such a large presence in Bangalore is also because of that, right? Um, our vision is to continue to expand our presence in India and Asia. We want to become the trusted global research and development center for Twilio. We are already on the way. We want to focus on the total ownership of the core engineering work. Now, coming to the coming to the um, uh, that's uh, the focus well, uh, uh, about uh, India as uh, the R and D center of the right. development. Yes. I am looking at what is the focus with India itself as a market. Uh, so, okay. what are the initiatives there? Yes. So, I was actually coming to the um, go to market side of it. Um, while we strengthen our presence in India for R and D, we are also putting similar focus for the go to market. Now, um, the way we are we are um, expanding into this region. We are being very mindful of the fact that India is a very, very large uh, region with multiple, multiple challenges. We are trying to build necessary product first approach to coming to India. We want to first understand that if we have to build for India, what are the what are the product capabilities that we need to build? What are the compliance? What are the data security? What are the governance that we need to make sure that we are adhering to before we come? Uh, to India as the significant player, right? Um, so that is also one of the one of the uh, initiative which is our go-to-market uh, teams are sort of working with us very closely on that. We are working with multiple customers in their early adoption of Twilio. We are learning. We are building that understanding in terms of as a product differentiator, what we can build for India, right? Um, which has the global scale, that has the global security and quality, but a very unique India flavor. Um, that is a process, like I said, we are still in the process of building that, that understanding, um, but we are extremely bullish about India, both from engineering talent that we have built so far and the go-to-market um, uh, you know, muscle that we are building right now. So um, please keep watching this space you will see some quite exciting news on that. So what are some of these initiatives or activities? One, uh, when you mentioned the product differentiators, so differentiating yourself from the other competing uh, customer engagement kind of solutions, uh, and also activities in terms of, uh, obviously, as you mentioned, first you are creating a conducive kind of environment. And then beyond that, so what are these activities or initiatives involved to reach out to customers? Yeah, yeah. so I think we are we are partnering with um, a first cohort of customers in India, like I said, to understand the product needs, which are very unique to India. Right. Um, at the same time, we are building that understanding will help us um, sort of really take that input into our broader product philosophy. For example, the consumer engagement product that I'm talking to about Twilio Engage um, is very uniquely placed to be a very big differentiator for customers in India, for example. We are working with some of the customers in the region to understand how would Twilio Engage kind of a solution would work in a specific 
specific market like India or Asia, right? Um, and I'll give you a differentiator, right? For example, um, in India, um, we are very familiar with the system of SMSs and OTPs. We are all used to that. Um, maybe we need to build a, a set of product capabilities that makes SMSs more conversational. So we are talking to some of our big, large partners in India to understand whether that is a use case we should be building to solve some of the problems that our customers are seeing. That is one example, but it gives you a, a sort of view in terms of why it is important for us to look at India more deeply in terms of what product requirements are there on the ground, because this is a different market. Yeah. Second thing that we are doing is also sort of um, working very closely with uh, our our partners and our our um, teams in Singapore, Sydney, to try and understand if we can build a regional flavor of go-to-market that can be led from India, where we can not only sell for India but we can sell for the entire region. Yeah. Um, so in terms of organizationally, also we want to make sure that we are ready to effectively support the customers in the region. Um, so multiple uh, angles to this. It's it's a, it's a very important, large, multi-year effort for us. But like I said, this is such a large problem and large critical problem space. We want to make sure that we are fully prepared in all aspects. Got it. So in the end, I would like to ask if we uh, look ahead for the next four to five quarters, what are yeah. going to be your key focus areas that can be in terms of Product expansion, geographical expansion, yeah. uh, new customer lines. So, what are uh, some of these key focus areas going to? Fantastic, fantastic. I think that's that's a that's a fantastic segue into uh, one of the topic that that I wanted to run with you. Um, we are very very aware of the changing dynamics of the industries across the globe, and like I said the uh, customer engagement report clearly articulates what are the areas digital transformation with multi-channel support personalization cookies third-party cookies is not your go-to place anymore trusted data uh, residency and how you engage smart this year and beyond we are building product capabilities in addressing all of that the biggest two important product areas for Twilio for next year and so are going to be Twilio Engage. Like I said, it's our next generation customer engagement platform built on top of segment and all the communication channels that solves a very unique combination of problem. One, <clears throat> multi-channel ability of going and reaching out to your consumer, personalization. Because it's a CDP built on segment, you don't rely on third party cookies. You have your first party data. You are going to be building ML and AI layers on top of Engage that allows you to engage smarter. And finally, segment being world's largest CDP gives you the trust that you need for your consumer data. Engage is going to be the biggest uh, product investment from our side over the next few quarters. While we so engage is going to solve the, the use cases of marketers, of sales, and uh, some of the areas that we talked about, the other side of this is Twilio's Flex Contact Center, which solves all of these questions, but for your contact center needs, where how do you reach to your consumers multi-channel digitally, smartly, you govern your data and secure your consumer data at the same time you make it personalized. So there are two very big bets for us, uh, Twilio Engage for marketers and uh, Twilio Flex for the contact center. And in the meantime, um, we are built on the world's largest CPaaS. We send world's, we, we actually send more emails, more messages, more video hours than anybody else in the planet. So we'll continue to invest on making our core CPS proportion even more stronger, more reliable, more scalable, more secure, right? 
So these are going to be the core focus areas for us. Um, and I'm also glad to tell you that in terms of R&B and go-to-market, India is playing a pivotal, critical role in all that we spoke about. And it's really great to see all of this being built in India as well, in Bangalore. Um, so that's it. That's where the excitement is for India. Great. Uh, thanks a lot. That was all very right, interesting. Sir. And I'm yes. sure uh, for all the viewers, very useful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. Bye-bye. Sure.